there chum so this is my guide on how to make units early game in no man's sky in 2020 up in the stations you're going to find these little flat discs little blue or orange cubes that look like this and once you pick them up or interact with them you are going to get yourself some navigational data so you're going to get these for free in stations now i've visited two stations at this stage i'm in survival mode and it's very early game i've only been playing for about two and a half hours and i'm going to exchange these four planetary charts. I'm going to go for the alien ones in this case because I'm after units. If I was after getting the blueprints and progressing in the game I'd probably choose other things but for units I'm going to go for these because you want to try and find yourself an ancient relic psych. Heck yes. So I'm down on the planet I'm scanning using those maps and yeah first one I find myself a monolith which is great for finding words but we're not after words we're after units and we want lots of units so we want ourselves a relic site or something that's going to point us to a relic site so there's a, there's a few things that can pop up that can do that monolith is not one of them you want ancient plaque or ruin if you get an ancient plaque you want to seek knowledge of the past it should take you to a relic site or there or thereabouts but in this case I've got signal detected which is a relic site and I'm going to head on over to that relic now and hopefully hopefully it's going to point us to a, a, a sort of burial site where I can dig up a giant chest and in those giant chests sometimes you're going to get a blue a purple or a gold item if you get a gold item you've hit freaking gold literally it's like super rare it's like the rarest of the rare it's like rocking horse shite it really is but anyway, so I'm seeking for knowledge of the past, and you can see that it's locked me into this sort of like little purple chest, which isn't too far normally from the actual site in question. I like to do this on planets that haven't got water, because sometimes you have to go under water in early game, especially in survival mode. Your oxygen levels don't last long to be doing this sort of shenanigans. So I'm going to fly over here. You can see I haven't got water on this planet, so I took a risk. I live life dangerously. So let's head on over here, and uh, we'll land, and we've first got to dig ourselves up three keys that appear in these little lunch boxes. There are five keys at each of these sites, chums. You don't have to travel outside of this area. It's nice and simple. It only takes a couple of minutes to start digging and looting stuff and picking up the chests. So here's my first little lunch box, which should contain a key. You can see here that this little box is quite small, hence why I call it a lunch box. Open that, and I got my first key. Lovely jubbly. Like I said, there's five keys there, but you only need to get the three. And when I head down here, I mean, your infantry space is very, very small. You've got to juggle things around like hell before you can do stuff. Here I have to ditch the uh, dioxide before I can actually open the chest to get the actual item. So make sure, make sure you've got decent, decent infantry space before you open the chest. Because you don't want to open the chest and lose the thing, you know. So here we go, let's open it up. And uh, here we go, I've got to put in my three keys now which is cool. I mean, they're going to disappear, so that should have freed me up an infantry slot anyway, so it's not too bad. And there we go. I oh, it's a golden one. Heck yes, that, that, that's very rare that happens. Okay, so although this tip looks freaking fantastic, the chance of that happening for you is very, very freaking minute. But I'm going to be able to sell that for just over a million units, which is freaking phenomenal. Another thing that you can do is scan on planets. A lot of planets are going to have these sort of like yellow diamond shapes. They're going to have one line, two lines, or three lines in. The three line items are usually the more valuable of the three, and they might take you to Albion Pearls, they might give you Gravitino Balls, or in this case, Subterranean Relics, which are also known as Vortex Cubes. Now, they do sell for a fair bit, not as much as that item that I just dug out the ground, but I was extremely lucky. But getting these, you're going to find them all over the place, and you can just get loads and loads into your infantry space. They, they only stack in about stacks of five or ten, though, depending on what you're getting. So, mm, it's a bit swings and roundabouts, whereas those other things that I just picked up from out of the ground, you know, the one that I dug out that chest, you, they only one per slot. Same with ancient bones and um, salvage tech, but we'll get to ancient bones and salvage tech a little bit later. But here we are. So there we go. I've got all this now all locked in. And I can sell those items, so here we go, I'm going to sell the um, ornate thing, and I'm going to sell the tetra cobalt, and anything else that I've just picked up on my way, because you do earn units just by playing, to be fair. 
And if you pick up missions, which I get to in a sec, that also helps as well. And there you go, it's all my vortex cubes. And now my unit stash is looking quite healthy. It's over the 1 million units, which is great. Another good way to actually make units as you go along is visit your missions agent and just pick up some missions. Whether you think you're going to be doing them or not, because they just sit in the background. Some of them are like scan minerals, scan flora, scan animals, kill animals, kill sentinels. All that sort of stuff is going to happen as you actually play anyway. So you may as well just grab them all, add them into your infantry space, and as you actually play in the game, you would slowly unlock those. And when you go to the stations, just visit your uh, missions agent and hand in any that you happen to have done while you've been playing. You might as well. It's money for nothing. So that's, that's a good little tip. Pick up missions as you go along. Right, once you've actually unlocked the Nexus or the, la uh, the um, Anomaly, as people call it. I mean, it is the Anomaly. The actual station down at the front where you pick up your missions is the actual Nexus, if you want to be pedantic. I mean, it was always called the Anomaly in previous iterations, but now we're up to 2020 and Next and Multiplayer. It's Most people call it the Nexus rather than the Anomaly now. But after you've spoken to Polo and Nada, you can call the Nexus in at will. And at that stage, after you've spoken to both of these two for the first time when you're up there, you speak to Nada first talk, go through all of his options and then speak to polo and you just have to you know go through the uh, language with him the little icon will appear off the top of his head that's gone now that purple icon that's that's the point where you can call the nexus at will you don't have to carry on doing all those side missions that it's just appeared up there um to call the nexus that's pretty much that now turn on multiplayer this is the next tip for making a lot of units and then all you need to do at this point is wait for the multiplayer spawns to spawn in. And once you start seeing their ships appearing and other people appearing, you can then go up to the base um, teleporter inside of, I'm going to call it the Nexus. Nexus rather than the Anomaly. Just rolls off the tongue a bit better. Nexus and Anomaly. Anyway, I'm going to head up these ramps. When you go up the ramps, you want to go to your left and up a ramp. And you will see this demonic looking dude at the top there. You might be wanting to turn around and go the other way because he's, he's quite dynamic looking. But yeah, just go past him and go over to this giant stargatey looking thing. And here you can actually choose to go to other players' bases. Now I'm looking for things that mention the word farm or mine or or um, anything that's got a decent picture that looks like it might be a farm or a mine. The ones at the top are the featured bases. Now they're usually featured because they look freaking amazing. A lot of the time they're, they're not farms or mines or got a lot there. So there's a gold mine in the list, but he hasn't got a he hasn't got an image. So I'm wondering Mm, is it any good? Not too sure. Because you do like to have an image, don't you? But you can hit on it anyway. And another thing to keep in mind, when you actually hit on one of these um, tiles, what you're looking for, I mean, that one looks great. It's got a lovely great big farm picture there of some kind. But it, the gold the gold mine is also one that's tempting me. Gold can sell for a fair bit, not as much as what you might think. It's not based on our real life -y type world. But when you look at these, if you see that it's got... Um, evil sentinels probably stay clear and look at the weather as well because early game if you're in survival like I am right now you don't want to land on a planet that's going to hoover up those bars of yours too, too quickly so just be a bit careful where you jump to be a bit selective be a bit choosy but jump to those systems you may have to wait for a while for it to download the base data I mean this one's got a biodome on it it looks like it's got power because I can see like a teleporter just there and so yeah this one looks like it's it is quite nice out of the two I think this is probably more appealing than the gold mine at this stage so I'm just gonna jump down to this base and have a quick look see however once I teleported there I couldn't find the base. I went into camera mode and all sorts. I got some oxygen out of there, but not much. Only 250. It looks like they've dismantled the base. But you see that icon at the bottom on the quick launch? You can jump straight back to the Nexus. So if you do jump to a base that's shite, you're not going to use your warp fuel. You're not going to use any of your resources. You've just got to walk back up the freaking ramps, past the demon-looking dude called Mercury, and over to the actual teleporter and just do that step again. And jump to the other base that you saw that you quite liked. It's as simple as that. Now what I don't do here, every time you jump to a system, even if it's got a crud base and you're not too happy with it, you can then fly up into space. I mean, you're going to need launch thruster fuel again, but um, you can go visit the station there. And at the station, you can pick up some more missions. You may even find a traveler, grab an extra glyph. You can call in the Nexus there if you wanted to. 
And yeah, you can um, upgrade your exo backpacky thing again from the Nexus in their system. So you can exploit the Nexus quite a lot to progress your game further. But at the moment, I'm just using it for units sake. So I'm looking around and again, there's not really a base here. Now, I'm following all the wires to see if it does lead to a base. I mean, this is called a gold mine. So I was expecting to see auto harvesters of some kind. There are some harvesters, there's an electrical power supply over there. But I'm following the batteries to see if there might be a base. I'll, I'll, when I find a farm or a mine, I'm really hoping it has got a small structure that may have a galactic trade terminal in there so I can actually pick all the stuff up from the resource harvesters and sell them directly at that base so I'm not crashing the economy in my own system or bouncing all over the place and it can all be done in one spot. Also because my infantry storage is quite small some of these mines and some of these farms can be quite large so when you visit some of these harvesters they've got like stacks and stacks and stacks of resources in but you can only take take 250 or at a, at a slot type you know because that's all you can actually hold so there you go there's 2500 there but I could take 250 because now I'm full so really what I need to do is um, maybe clear my space out or visit one of my vaults and empty my vaults before I start doing this process but there we go um, you can just keep jumping backwards and forwards and again from the quick menu you can just jump straight back to the Nexus and teleport back again which is awesome and then go to a station and sell the stuff okay so you can use that you can jump to people's bases over and over again from the nexus you get to see some really interesting bases it gives you base building ideas and you can also visit their stations and all sorts so yeah pick up extra missions stack the missions like i was mentioned earlier you can when you stack missions you can get quite a lot of nanites units etc etc Another way is to find yourself a salvageable, salvageable scrap planet or an ancient bones planet. Now on these planets you're going to find these sort of yellow markers. They look a little bit like the, um, the, 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 the buried stuff, the salvageable tech. But instead it's going to say like salvage container or ancient bones. And they're a yellow colour rather than just the translucent light blue colour. And then when you actually get to them, I mean I've gone to a salvageable scrap planet... I'm going to find some sort of technology buried in the ground that I've got to interact with and a sentinel will appear after I grab it. If you do the ancient bones there's no sentinel to contend with so ancient bones would be my preferred choice and also the ancient bone sites sometimes you can get like four or five different bones in the same area they're a lot more lucrative when it comes to units however I wasn't lucky enough to have an ancient bone site in my system that I started in but there is a salvageable scrap site so it's the lesser of the two, but you want to try and find yourself ancient bones. And again, you know when you're in the Nexus and you jump into people's bases and stuff? When you fly up and you're going to the station, scan all the planets. See if there's one that's got ancient bones. If there is, stay a while. Heck, you can even throw down your own base computer if you want, because there's no portal interference when you're doing it from the Nexus, which is sweet. Another little tip there for you. But if the Sentinel does appear, right now I have no bolt caster. I'm that early game that all I've got is a freaking mining laser to keep the thing at bay. Really, I didn't want to antagonise the dang thing, because this one's slightly heavily armoured than a normal sentinel. So, I just need to run, because he's going to kill me. I have not got hardly any shield. I, I'm pretty much out of the box at this stage. I've just changed my colour. Uh, but yeah, just run away. It doesn't take so long for the actual... Uh, there's no wanted level or anything like that. You just have to get out of its field of view, and then it stops chasing you, which is nice and easy. So, yeah... The salvageable scrap is quite lucrative as well. I mean, if I pop into there, it's, it's not as lucrative as that item that I got out of the chest, but it's still a quarter of a million units for just one. And you can walk around the planet and do a load of these. I mean, if your hazard protection isn't the right hazard protection for the planet, it could be a little bit difficult. And try to steer clear of the super hazardous planets, ones that have got raging storms. But yeah, you are going to make quite a lot of units just picking up ancient bones or the salvageable scraps. So look for those planets and yeah maybe stick a base computer on there so you can get back there nice and easily or something but that's a very good way to make units early game. Now so there are other exploits you can do with the Nexus and one is take advantage of those that are using the personal refiner glitch. Now yeah I will put a link up to the personal refiner glitch it's going to be put across my face right now if you do want to um, duplicate items it's it's not the best way to play but here you go i've put down a um 
a, a, a storage container. I'm going to transfer all my stuff over to the storage container. When I say it's not the best way to play, it's up to you how you want to play. I'm not going to judge. But um, I, I've done it a few times. Heck yes, I've done it a few times. Because sometimes you might sell a ship and you lose a lot of stuff when you sell a ship. Because you can't just break down all your modules again. So you have to start from scratch. So sometimes, yes, to get another ship up to where my old ship was. Sometimes I've done duplication. But there you go. I've put everything from my inventory space into a vault container. The vault blueprint is one of the very first things that you're asked to actually build after building a base and it's it's the thing that I had to do just before I got the Nexus. So if you've got the Nexus you've probably already put down a vault of some description. But then when I go into the actual Nexus now what I'm gonna do is just stand around. I'm just gonna stand around because to get some of the glitches to work like the personal refiner glitch you have to hand an item over to somebody. And um, so I'm going to stand in a place which is quite commonly known as the best spot, spot to stand to be given stuff for nothing, basically. And uh, yeah, I go make a cup of tea, coffee, grab some lunch, cook something, and then come back maybe like 20 minutes later. And usually I've been handed off something or a couple of things. And now I'm in survival mode. So a lot of people like their resources in survival mode. Not many people play in survival mode. A lot of people can be playing in normal. So, yeah, in normal, this is going to work a lot better for you. But, yeah, I'm just going to stand around here, and there's an emoji you can use. One down here that says, need resources. So you're letting people around you know that you need resources and that you're a little bit low on stuff. If you do this sometimes up by the base computer in the back of the Nexus, sometimes people give you um, a salvageable scrap. Um, uh, storage thing so you can get some more base computer bits that's what I've found anyway so yeah if you see somebody there saying they need resources that's probably what they're after they're probably not after just random junk but standing down the front here where the ships land and doing it that kind of signifies you're up for pretty much give me whatever you you've got abundance of or whatever but for them to get their um, personal refiner glitch to work they have to hand you over something I got some granite there it was better than nothing it was freaking free so thank you very much you whoever you are air grab for you so thanking you goodbye and there's the air grab you see how he disappeared that's all part of the actual glitch itself but there we go they're my methods I will put up another card well an end card to some of my other playlists on help tips for you all. Okay, I just want to say a massive great big thank you to all of my Patreon backers, thanking you and all those that back me via YouTube membership, thanking you. And if you want to grab yourself a fine and dandy pair of socks, a mug, a t-shirt or a hoodie, head on over to my merch store. And I'd like to say a massive thank you for everybody watching and if you want to stay with me a little bit longer, hit one of these tiles on this screen, heck yes.